So you just bought, or you're planning to buy, the Lovell's Health and their respective continuous glucose monitor. In today's video, I'm gonna walk you through every single feature, how it all works, how to install the hardware on your body, and what the overall experience is like. Let's get into it. If you haven't bought it yet, there is a link down below that helps support the channel so I can keep making videos like this. What is a continuous glucose monitor? It's essentially a little computer chip that goes into your arm and it's gonna measure your interstitial glucose. So that way we can understand how does our lifestyle and our diet factors impact our glucose levels. This is mainly used by diabetics as a medical device, but in this scenario, I and anyone else who orders it through Lovells is using it to optimize their health, and this is not a medical use case. Please keep that in mind. So more than likely, you got the Lovells Health Kit in your mail. If you are based in the United States, you will need to sign up online and give them some of your health details. There will be a doctor that will approve your prescription for these continuous glucose monitors. You will select from two different options as of today. One is gonna last you 10 days, so we get three of those, and the other one will last you 14 days and we get two of those. First, we'll talk about the installation process, the syncing process, and then next we'll talk about the app and how to use the whole Levels Health app, as well as some calibration steps. Installation, so I installed this Levels Health CGM actually yesterday, and I put the active cover patch on and on, but the most important thing that I would say is I prefer to shave the area that you're gonna be applying this on, maybe you're hairless and that, and that doesn't apply to you. Make sure to clean it. I, you could typically do this right after you shower or just get some water and, and then you will wipe it down with an alcohol swab just to clean that surface area of your skin. Depending on the type of CGM that you ordered, you will get an installation piece that looks something like this. One is a circle and one is more like a oval. What I like to do is be really diligent on where I'm putting it. I put it on the back side of my arm. Depending on which glucose monitor you get, you will get some documents that might say to place it on your lower belly. This is not for medical use. I just want you to remember that I am not a diabetic. People who are buying this product are not diabetic and this is not for medical use. So placing it on this region is not required. What I prefer to do then is to find kind of the fatty part of my arm. So anywhere where there's least amount of muscle and I typically will, if I have multiple sensors, I will switch arms as I'm doing different sensors. And as I remove the sensor and I need to insert the next one, I will switch to the other arm. But what I like to do is I'll shake out my arm and then I'll flex my tricep and my shoulder muscle. I'll hold it in the mirror and try to find the region where there's the least amount of muscle tension. Cause if I'm working out a lot, if I'm squeezing and doing a lot of shoulder work, it's just gonna have more weird sensations. So ideally I try to minimize that as much as possible. Once I've found that place in the mirror, I'll be like, okay, I'll take the applicator, I'll place it over that spot, I'll hold it, I'll double check, and then boom, I press it. This will actually poke a needle into you and it will send a filament in with it. The needle comes right out, the filament stays in. The filament is flexible, it's wobbly. And then the filament is attached to another sensor that is reading your interstitial glucose. Not your blood glucose, but interstitial. It works the same way with both applicators. Just place it on over that area, press the button, boom, it's in, painless. Once that is done, if you do get the 10 day version, you will have a transmitter that will actually go inside of the sensor. So you will slide the transmitter in. And then once the 10 days are up, you will actually keep the transmitter and throw away the sensor. And really make sure to clean the transmitter. The transmitter will last you 90 days from the day that you start your first use. These are the applicators, this is kind of what they look like. They have codes, different ways to put them on. The circular version, you will have to take the applicator and actually put it inside of here. And then once that's prepared, then you can applicate it on. With the oval option, you will have to remove this piece and install the sensor and then place the transmitter in after the fact. Once you have completed that process, Levels does provide two active cover patches, right? You have your oval shape and you have your circular shape. So they will send you the proper length. You will place this over the sensor. I like to keep this part directly over the sensor. And then the sticky part will go around your skin. Try to clean as much as possible around that area as well as get any hair out of the way because that will just help with the removal as well as making sure this active cover stays on for as long as possible. I have noticed that if I swim a lot, I sweat a lot, if I go to the sauna a lot, it's going to make the active cover start to wrinkle a bit more. It starts to slightly come off on the edges. And that can happen around day, you know, 9, 10, 11, 13, 14. So I'll be ready for that. There was one time where I was swimming super fast and the entire thing just came off. Depending on your lifestyle, the moisture factor, you know, this is on your skin and it's not supposed to be there and, and things can cause it to fall off. If anything does happen, reach out to Levels Customer Support. They have been super kind when it comes to issues like that. There's also other scenarios where I have actually removed it. Like even right now, if I lean back in the chair and I kind of turn my arm the wrong way, it can budge up against the edge of the seat and I can feel it. If I do it too hard, could come out. When I'm walking down the hallways, I'm a very wide human being, and sometimes I don't fit in certain walkways. So like, if my arm hits up against the door or up against the wall, like that can help cause it to fall off. If I'm trying to put on my shirt, and the shirt's kind of tight, and I'm like really tugging on it, the shirt can also pull on it, because you know, it's not really part of my skin, it's supposed to feel like it, but there's definitely parts where things can hook onto it and really pull out. So just be mindful, you have this in the back of your arm, be ready 
Just take it a little bit slower on this side. You can't just be running into walls like you're invincible. Maybe that's just me, honestly, I don't know. <laughs> These are the alcohol pads. You wanna make sure that you clean the area before you install this. That's really important. You are going to puncture a needle into your skin and it's gonna take a filament in with it and the needle will leave. But just because you're putting that filament inside, make sure the area is clean. The next step is pairing the transmitter and the device to your phone. Depending on which one you get, they will have instructions. Just follow that. It's relatively simple. Uh, it'll either be via Bluetooth or NFC. If you do choose the Bluetooth option, it's gonna stream to this app. And if you choose the other option, it's gonna use NFC. So you will actually have to scan it and you will open up the app. You tap scan sensor. It's gonna pop up ready to scan and you will actually just tap it over the sensor and that's how you will download the data. But both of those devices will then send the information to levels. Oh, now once you have gathered that data inside of the CGM app, that information will be sent straight to your levels health app. And this is where all of the fun stuff happens. All the insights, the data entry, and it's a big party. But before we get into that, I highly recommend you calibrate the sensor. I have one of these devices called a Keto Mojo, but you can buy any blood pricking, finger pricking device. This is just cool because it has Bluetooth, it's smart and I love smart things. But what you'll get is this device right here. You can set which kind of mode you need it on. I think I'm about a four, maybe a five, honestly. My skin is kind of thick. I will open this and inside of it, I will place a lancet, which will then puncture my skin just enough. I think we might need to buy some more. But yeah, these blue devices will go inside of the pen. From there, I will pull out a glucose monitor. I think these are ketone monitors, but I will have a glucose monitor. I will slide that device into the Keto Mojo slot right here. And once it's ready, I'm going to press this button. It's gonna know that it wants to measure my glucose. I'll prick my finger, pop, on the side usually. And I'll make sure some blood comes out. I'll take the test strip, put it right on, boom. Get some, get enough blood to fill the line. It's gonna give me my actual glucose values for my blood. And then I can use that number to calibrate the sensor. Cause sometimes it can be off depending on where you put it. I've noticed on one arm, the overall values might be a little bit higher versus like on my left arm, the overall values are a little bit lower. So if you calibrate it, those charts will essentially align to be at the right place they're supposed to be at. I highly recommend you do this cause you could kind of freak out if you're like, oh my God, my glucose value is so high, but it might just need to be calibrated. The graphs are gonna be the same, the trends, but kind of where that starting point of the graph is, is gonna be adjusted based on your calibration. Very important, highly recommend. I'll have this one linked below, but you can buy anyone online. This is what the Levels Health app looks like today. It's gonna get updated all the time. They're very good at making the software better. The most important things that I would recommend that you do is activate Apple Health. What that will do is it will read your start and end times from your workouts, your start and end time from your sleep, and it will automatically input that information into this graph. Now, how do you do that? Tap your little face at the top, scroll down, make sure that it says connected to Apple Health. If you're unsure, you can go to the health app, tap your face, go to apps and services, scroll down to levels, and it'll tell you what things it's reading. So the important parts, sleep, your workouts, you know, weight's also good too, and a whole bunch of other things are good too. But I would say those are the most important metrics to measure. The other thing I would do if you can, depending on the app that you have, so for example, this one, I would go to settings, use Apple Health, make sure that is on, because then when I write this information, it'll automatically save to my Apple Health, and now I can add it as a favorite, and it's always gonna be up to date. And I know that you know my glucose values over the past few months, whenever I use it, is on. I like to use this every like three months, so it'll be there, and it's saved forever. Depending on the device you have, if you wanna calibrate, you go to settings, here it says calibrate, once I've gotten the value, I would type that in here, boom, boom, and it's gonna calibrate the sensor for me. Ideally, you wanna do this in the morning when you're fasted, right? That's gonna give you kind of the most accurate number. So now that you've connected to Apple Health, to read and write, bueno. Levels, I'd love to see the app itself write to Apple Health, that'd be so much better. One day, one can dream. Uh, invite friends to Levels, I have a link below, use that link, it'll help support the channel. You can manage your subscription settings here. Uh, change any kind of uh, notifications as well. If you don't want the daily summary email, you can turn that off. If you don't want to share analytics, it's there too. You can see your sensor data when it was last synced. If you're having issues, you can troubleshoot over here. If you ever have any issues, tap the question mark. You can go ahead and find the FAQ or ask them, you know, send them a little chat. Hey, I'm having a problem. I highly recommend if this is your very first time, do not install the CGM on the weekend. Do it on the weekday so that way they can provide support for you if you do have any issues, right? And since I automatically imported my sleep, you can see it logged 10 hours and 34 minutes of sleep. If we go to today, it says I logged nine hours and two minutes of sleep. So it has my bedtime, my average glucose while I was sleeping, and it automatically does that. If I work out, it pulls in the start and stop times of my workouts. If my heart rate is above 150, it's gonna mark it as strenuous, and it's gonna disregard any kinds of spikes. Because I know if I go to the sauna, I do like HIT or high intensity style workouts, my glucose is gonna spike. That's because your body needs glucose, so it's gonna send more glucose into your blood to get your body operational and working in these high intense environments. 
and that's okay. I think a lot of people think, oh, I got a continuous glucose monitor. That means if there's a spike, it's bad. That is not always the case. This is where the fun and educational component comes in. Well, now I can kind of see overall statistics. So my current glucose average, my stability, my spike time, I had kind of like a oats thing earlier. And I know oats will spike my glucose. I can see it's rating it a four out of 10. If I wanna dive deeper into my glucose values, I can see, all right, was it a massive spike, a drop, and then a big wave after? Or did it stabilize pretty quickly? You can see my average heart rate during that time, any steps I was taking. Right, I know if I walk, my spike is more likely to be a little bit lower. So I tend to try to take a five to 20 minute walk after I eat something, especially when it's heavy. Oh, wow, look at this. Five guys, we had a nice five guys burger and it's a six out of 10, even better. So this is where the behavior change comes in. When I eat something and I'm not doing any behaviors to mitigate the glucose spike, if I see a massive spike that I was not planning on having, then I know maybe I shouldn't eat that food as much. Like I know certain kinds of oats might spike it more than other kinds of oats for my body specifically, right? And if you wanna dive deeper into the graph, you can go ahead and do like a pinch to zoom. You can actually get deeper, see the sun is kind of when you woke up, the little plates are meals, uh, the little burgers, the burger that I ate. You can see the spike. If I forgot to add something, I can add the plus sign. I can add food, exercise notes, we'll get into that. And then here I get to see my stable meals, like one of one, great job, Shervin. My stable hours, I want to aim for at least 12 stable hours, so we're on par so far. Healthy habits. It's not only food that's gonna impact our glucose, but how our lifestyle is. So if you're stressed, if you didn't get enough sleep, if you're doing exercise sauna, like that's gonna increase your glucose values. So I know on days where I don't sleep well, and or I'm very stressed, my glucose values are gonna spike a lot more from the same exact meal. So this is where it gets complicated. There's a lot of variables. It's just being mindful about the most impactful ones. For me, that's sleep, stress, diet. Then you can scroll down and see today's timeline. So these are all of the little circle dots that you saw on the graph. I can get a score for my food. So you know, higher is better, the more green it is, even better. I had a little cold brew coffee, an egg avocado sandwich, it's an eight out of 10, stable response, that's really good. Happy to see that. Drives positive behavior change. If I wanna share this photo with someone, I can do that, press play. And I'm like, guys, stable response, look at me go. Fun little thing that I could share on social media or with friends. We always love sharing things, don't we? Welcome to Sherman Shares. As you do this over time, you'll start to develop a library of data as well as foods that you eat. So every time you eat something, it'll give you some insights sometimes. And here you can see all of the insights. If you tap search insights, it's gonna give you a whole bunch of stuff of like really cool information that has told you so far. So like quality sleep, like I said, if you have poor sleep the night before, that's where I'm more likely to eat healthier because I know unhealthy foods can negatively impact my life even more. Oatmeal versus chia pudding food swap, right? You can say, hey, maybe you should avoid oatmeal and have a chia pudding instead. There's a large set of tips that you can follow. It's gonna start to send these insights on random moments depending on the food that you input. So really valuable, you can go ahead and read them there. If you wanna go back and look at different dates, so the last time I wore this was in June, I can see my daily scores right here. I can hop through and see kind of what my spike times were. This is kind of like the overall data. You can see the workouts that I did. Sometimes I forget to input the food. You can see the weights are kind of the, the workouts that I did, one hour activity of running. Sometimes I do way too many activities. Uh, if you wanna get some recipes for potential options, you can tap the little fork and plate and it's gonna give you a whole bunch of recipes here that you can try out. I'm still learning how to cook and probably will for the rest of my life, so I haven't tried those yet. You have notifications here just in case anything pops up. The sensor icon to see, hey, has my sensor synced? Sometimes it could be delayed. You still have to use two separate apps, one to capture the data, and then it sends it to the level server, which will then appear here, and sometimes that can take a little bit of time, so be patient, it might take a couple hours. Now, inputting meals or exercise or notes. Your exercise can be automatically inserted if you have a smart fitness tracker with Apple Health support. But if you don't, you can tap the plus sign here. There's gonna be an exercise option. Go ahead and tap your type of exercise. Check if it was strenuous, if your heart rate was over 150. If you're confused, you can tap here. It'll explain that a little bit further to you. Describe kind of what you did and then tap done. And you can change the time, the date as needed. If you wanna do the start and end time, that'll be even more valuable. Notes. If you wanna add kind of a generic note with like a photo, you can do that. <laughs> Last time I did it was November. Date and time, bottom left, great. If you do add a photo from your camera roll, like let's say I picked this one, it happened yesterday at 9.02 a.m., it will automatically update the time to match the photo. I really love that because if you forget to put in the notes or you forget to put in your food, you can go ahead and just select the photo from the past. So if you're someone who just takes photos of their food, you tap the plus sign, you tap the little photo icon, 
You find the food that you just ate. It'll add it to your thing. It'll add the time yesterday at 134. I can say what it was and then I can move on. But if you're like at the meal and you're just about to take a photo of it, you can do your Instagram photo first and then tap the camera icon. It's going to pull it up. Let's find this. So let's say I just had this drink right here. This little cherry bundate, 25 grams of sugar. So it should spike my sugar. This is 25 grams of sugar, so I should see some kind of a spike. So cherry bunny juice, I put the time in, I tap next. Now I can add in other things like, oh, here, tart cherry juice. It's definitely that. Water, definitely sugar. So you can add in option ingredients and then hit done. Now it is there. Sometimes it will actually give you insight. So if I tap it here, so now that I've added those extra analysis points, it's going to show me some insights and ingredient breakdowns like sugar. It'll tell me a little bit about that. Juice and the things that I can do based on that. Tart cherry juice. Avoid added sugars. Zero grams of added sugar. We're good. If you need to edit it, you can tap edit. Let's say you mess up the time. You forgot to add a photo. You can do that after the fact. Boom. Now it is there. And then I can just wait two hours and it's going to give me a score depending on how my glucose values have changed from eating this. If you eat too many things back to back, it's going to be hard to tell how it's impacting you. So I recommend, you know, have some space between what you're eating. If you're snacking all day, it gets even harder to track. Uh, so just be mindful. Maybe just try to put things together and eat them in two hour segments or just put in all the snacks and then it's gonna like group things. The next tab is my data on the bottom right. If you tap that, you're going to be able to see all of your data. This includes your glucose values, uh, trends, and anything that's been imported from Apple Health. And they do have a cool metabolic panel that you can order. Come to your house, do a blood test and get some information. This is what it looks like. These are my last test results, essentially within range. Um, what's really neat is I'll do fasting insulin. So that's something that I'm not able to get my doctor or like it's really hard, I gotta push for it. But here is easy to order. They show up to my house and got it done. This is a great way to get some metabolic information. If you haven't done it with your doctor, please go do it. I think you can get once a year usually through your insurance for free. So make sure to get that done with your doctor. This is great in addition. Next, you come down to all data. You can categorize it by seven days, 14 days, 30 days, 90 days. And I can get my average glucose over the last 90 days. I can see how it's been changing or trending. Luckily, it's going down. My average meal score, right, for the things that I ate. My spike count. Okay, it's trending down. That's good. We don't want it to trend up. My spike time. How much time am I spending at an elevated glucose level? My stability score. Am I trying to maintain as much stability as possible, right? It's removing all of the strenuous exercise factors. Remember that. My walking glucose, the exercise time, my overall sleep, steps, and weight being pulled in from Apple Health. So this is a great spot to kind of see your trends. Are you trending in the right direction? I think it's really reassuring when you're working on something and you get to see that live data change. It's really helpful and valuable for me to be like, oh my God, I'm doing better. This is good. It's motivating me and it allows me to commit and keep going. On the other side of it, if your numbers are trending in the wrong direction and you're trying to make it better, that can be demotivating, but you also need to realize maybe we need to rethink what's going on and just restructure our plan and strategy. So use this information as a tool to better improve your health. Do not let it control your life. So overall, the most important things are install the chip, right? At 10 days, I will remove this. I will save the transmitter. Do not throw that away. I will then swap it out and put in a new sensor with that same transmitter. If I have the other device, I will throw that away and I'll get a whole new one. That one will last me 14 days. Next, make sure to log your food. Automatically import your sleep and your workouts. And then go ahead and check in on the app every day to see how you're performing, what can you learn, and how can you change your behavior the next day. Run experiments, try new things. I've done a ton of videos where I am trying things like berberine, for example, to see, hey, does it actually impact my glucose or not? If you haven't purchased one yet, use the link down below. That will help support the channel. Follow me on Instagram, Twitter, and Strava at Shervin Shares. Let's be friends online. Let me know any questions you have in the comments contact level support for anything else because I don't work for them. I just love making videos about health and fitness stuff. If there's any other product that you want me to dive in detail with, let me know below and I can make that video. These videos aren't easy, but I hope they're valuable. I want to make your life easier. We'll see you in the next one. Peace.